10,000 Days is the fourth studio album by the American progressive rock and metal band Tool. The album spawned three top 10 rock singles after its release and debuted at number one at the Billboard Top 200 chart. Although many fans often recite Anima and Lateralis as the best Tool albums, 10,000 Days was a great effort that built on the classic Tool sound. Complex riffs and patterns, deeply intentional lyrics, and surprising experimentation are all elements that can be found on previous albums. But on 10,000 Days, they're more refined. Despite of being far from their best received effort, fans kept this album closer to their hearts in the years after its release since the band went on hiatus and didn't give any sign of activity for a very long time. And with time, it became another classic effort from them. But it wasn't just the growing maturity of the album that made it outstanding though. Everything from the album title and artwork to the lyrical themes and the release process came very effortlessly to the band. They had become refined musicians. By 2006, Danny, Justin, Adam and Maynard had accumulated almost 60 years of collective experience in the band. And that was definitely starting to show. Let's take a closer look. According to vocalist Maynard James Keenan, the album title 10,000 Days was a reflection on how long it took to evolve as a person and let go of pain. As he mentioned in an interview, the songs were meant to chronicle that process, hoping that my gift would be to share that path and hope that I could help somebody get past that spot. But the title might carry an even more evocative and direct reference. When Maynard was very young, his mother got paralyzed after she suffered from a cerebral aneurysm. In a paralyzed state, she went on to live another 27 years, a little less than 10,000 days before she died. Now, Tool is known for being somewhat unconventional in their ways of creating albums. Their music has certainly proved that, but so has their artwork. If you buy the CD format of this album, you'll see that it has a cardboard-bound booklet covered by a flap with stereoscopic glasses attached. If you use the glasses to view the artwork inside the album, they give the artwork a three-dimensional look. See stuff. I mean, we all see in 3D, but we don't like really study that moment of 3D. Alex Gray is the man behind the artwork for Tool's third album, Lateralis. But he also offered to help them with this one. The cover shows a painting of a human-like creature with two or even three faces on his head, depending on how you see it. It's actually a snippet of an even bigger painting that he made called Net of Being. Alex Gray explained that the inspiration for this painting came through a journey he had after drinking the South American ceremonial brew, ayahuasca, giving him a series of impactful hallucinations. In his vision, he saw what he referred to as a blazing vision of an infinite grid of godheads. Now, in terms of recording, the band was in the studio for around four to five months. Every time the band decides to make a record like this, they make sure to rehearse and complete all the songs so that they can get the job done way more easily once they go into the studio to record. The album was recorded at O. Henry Studios in Burbank and at The Loft and Grandmaster Studios in Hollywood, California. It was mixed at Bay 7 in North Hollywood and mastered at Gateway Mastering Studios in Portland, Maine. It was then released on May 2nd, 2006. Maynard emphasized in an interview with MTV at the time that it was a meticulous thought process behind the release of this and their previous albums. Instead of treating the album as a piece of music, it's treated like a piece of art, more similar to movies. Not just the material on the album needs to be good, but also the presentation. When it takes so long to make a record, you want to make sure it's presented in the proper way. Because every time we put out a record, it's a whole new infrastructure and label in place. 
So we have to re-educate people that are working for us to put out this record how we think. So it's a very long process. And so to give it the best chance that it can go out and be presented properly, you kind of have to maintain some symbols, some orchestration. And if that's compromised, it may not really have the impact that it should. And especially an album like this. These are not commercials. These are not three minute jingles. They're not as easy to get into. This is more like presenting a film. And as you know, when films are coming out, there is very much a process. The members of Tool were very reclusive and hesitant to doing interviews for a long time. That was at least the reputation they had before 2006. Now, around the time of releasing 10,000 Days, they seemed to open up more to interviewers, most likely to generate more buzz around their album. My first question is, how come we haven't been able to interview you guys and, and all that kind of stuff in the past? Oh, uh, God, I couldn't really, couldn't really say. I know that we didn't, you know, we used to do a little less press than we're doing right now. Yeah, sorry if we passed you by. Unintentionally, I can say. Now, moving over to the lyrical side of the album, we see a thread of these huge concepts throughout the lyrics of all the songs on here. In Vicarious, Maynard sings about how our species have evolved the survival instinct of observing dangerous situations and death from a safe distance. If we go back to hunter-gatherer societies, we see that people who took the largest risks more often got killed, while the people that stayed safe survived. After having this behavioral pattern repeated over thousands of generations, we became hardwired to notice fear and danger because it helped our ancestors survive and reproduce. And in an age where signals of danger, death and suffering are accessible 24-7 through modern media, most people are emotionally crippled and confined to a passive lifestyle. While most people choose to ignore this and like to think that they're in complete control of their lives, Maynard admits that he's a result of his genetic bias and the messages of modern media. In Jambi, Maynard sings about himself or another person, but in the first person perspective. He's a wealthy person who's dealt with the devil in one way or another. He went from being a needy person to a wealthy person, so a possible rags to riches story is at the bottom of this. In every chorus, he sings about how he would give away all of his riches for this other person. This person is characterized as the center in his life, a person that brings balance and harmony. But you Now, the lyrics basically portray a man who's torn between the things he lusts for and the things he wants to preserve. He's addicted to the limerence of treasures and flesh. He is so caught up in this, and he's struggling to maintain the more meaningful things in his life, like a long-term friendship or love affair. In the end of the song, the person is so fed up with his mind's constant swaying from instant gratification to long-term values that he doesn't see any meaning in living. After all, it seems like he'll never be able to truly know what he wants. The last song that I want to touch on is The Pot arguably one of Tool's most accessible and popular metal songs, the lyrics criticize the federal court system in the US. Maynard specifically writes about kangaroo courts. A kangaroo court is a court that ignores recognized standards of law or justice. It's a court case in which the accused is considered guilty before they really get a fair trial. Maynard is questioning who the accuser or court are to say that the person is guilty of a crime when they are committing a crime themselves. There's several references to the accuser's eyes, 
And with these references, Maynard is pointing out how the accuser is blinding himself to the truth that is in plain sight. During one phrase, the accuser is weeping shades of indigo. In Eastern religious traditions, for example, the color indigo represents intuition and understanding. The accuser is therefore weeping his intuition away, giving space for ignorance to take over. On this album, Maynard's lyrics take on huge concepts like he's always done with Tool. In short, Vicarious talks about our biology, Jambai talks about our suffering because of our biology, while The Pot talks about the hypocrisy that exists in our society. There's tons of interesting topics in other songs on the album too, some songs referring to the tragic sickness and loss of Maynard's mother, other songs describe tripping on some type of substance and experiencing weird hallucinations, while others discuss the evolution of human consciousness. I just want you to know that we've just dipped our toes into the lyrical worlds in this video and that there's so much more to discover in Tool's lyrics if you're really interested. Now, when reflecting on how the band had progressed from previous albums, drummer Danny Carey explained that the overall goal with this album and their previous albums was to say more with less. They want to give the most meaningful musical experience and with as little effort as possible. Now, I think the statement of saying more with less goes for a lot of things that Tool do, including this album. There's meaning and intention put into everything from the title and the artwork to the lyrics and the release. And although more often it takes years, <coughs> decades, for Tool to release new albums, there's so much value in every effort they put out. It's quality over quantity. And it seems like Tool is one of those few bands that make this work in a time where there's a thousand new internet posts every single second. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna mention that we have an amazing community over on Discord. It's a server where we have a lot of fun conversations about music, instruments, creative stuff, and basically everything in between. So if you wanna be a part of that, make sure you click the link below in the description.